Well, I think when by attachment it goes on the snowplow, you know, 
was that sort of stuff. Like, you know, get by the seven or two thousand dollars. Pay out some of Talk to the state boy about the intersection of Stafford Road and Highway 50. Has he gotten back to you? The state guy? Yeah, or, or the engineer. area engineer, or what, whoever it's, whatever it's called. I never talked to them. I talked to Kirk and Michelson. Well, I did notice that last week when the state bladed off Highway 50, they also went in and did all the, the roads leading into the highway. Usually, you know, they just... They must have been a long time. Must have been. <laughs> I, I was surprised, but every 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 mile they pushed the snow out of the way from the sand roads leading into Highway 50. Right. Because that's not something we Usually when you have a And maybe, and maybe they were doing some training or something. And they will hit them up to do that intersection in front of the go off. Get them in a good mood. More flu vaccine this year than last year, or less? Um, as much as I've given? Yeah. I don't know. I have to. Look. No, I'm just curious whether 
We're up to like 910 shots. Complications from the flu. What's tetanus called? Mm -hmm. What's tetanus called? This requires a motion.
Maybe we'll have to get you some of those little covers to put over the boat. Yeah, for a garage. Yeah, get some tarp. Get some tarp. Yeah. Anyway, I got bids. Um, I got three bids. Clausen Motorsports told me $140 mounted and balanced. Kansas Co-op said $630. Now, hold on. You're talking about each tarp at Clausen? Yeah. $140 mounted and balanced for $560. Kansas Co-op's $137.37, but they're going to charge me $20 to mount and balance each one. And then Fisher Automotive gave me three different kinds. And Cook, which I thought he misspelled it until I watched the Jayhawks the other night, their advertisers. And Cook is $520 mounted and balanced. Amy Royal is $560 mounted and balanced. And then there's a Combo, which he does not recommend, for $516.
And it sounds like maybe that might be part of your issue. I don't ever think about stuff. Yeah, well, in right. my service, maybe I can just remember to tell them. Because fishers have been servicing them. Yeah, they'll be real paid about the good water. Yeah, it's supposed to be like that. 10,000. Something like that. Yeah. Really? I don't do it either. So, who is you to get the cross? Well, I don't know where you guys want. I think Lady Hurst. There's, 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 there's not much difference between 15, 20 bucks between no, those. No, so that's right. That's right. Either one's fine with me. Yeah, it's, 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 just the idea, huh? it's just the idea that there ought to be some type of work. Miley's more into that though. Well, and they may not be as good a tire as you thought either. They might not be. They're 40,000 mile tires and they're 30,000 mile tires. I mean, uh, or they'll say they were out of line or something else. That you could did be. Wrong. That could be. Well, for that you need to find out. <laughs> that's way cheaper than buying tires. That's true. If you've got features, I'd go ahead and probably lie for you if you ask them what you think you'd put the yard on. Yeah. Alrighty then. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. software for theirs is just too expensive um, and the cables for us to purchase just for their radios so uh, some of them had to go up to Great Bend Radio or mobile radio in Great Bend. Um, handhelds are probably the ones that are left over. I've got a few handhelds left still to program but um, for the most part most of the radios are done. It's just been, it's been a headache trying to find a computer that would accept the software and the cable at the same time, so. We so we're, we're in compliance and pretty well. Real close. But uh, the rate that uh, the radio shop charges up there, we think a considerable amount by having them down. Right. Yeah. They're, they're pretty high, the radio shop is. But they want for a And we even started going through uh, a place back in Kansas City just because they were so extremely high up. <coughs> Uh, did you ever get a price? I did not. What, um, what I never paying? contacted Jeff to find out what they ended up. They had to take up, uh, I believe, four handhelds for the sheriff's department, and then four more handhelds between Maxwell PD, and then a couple backup radios or something. They had to take up maybe eight to ten radios, and uh, I that was last week. So I've never got a chance to ask Jeff what he ended up paying for that, or if they even told him what he ended up paying for that yet, but um, I know that day they took radios up there, I received at least 
two to three phone calls from the radio service with wonderful news each time. So I'm kind of guessing he may end up with a pretty healthy bill out of that one. But what you're saying that everybody's at, not just you guys, but the sheriff, everybody except Rhodes and Bridges might have a Rhodes and Bridges too. Rhodes and Bridges, um, he's. There's. We've got Vertex and Motorola, ICOMs, and Kenwood radios out there. All I really have software for is the Motorola's and the Vertexes. So I can do the Vertexes that the Sheriff's Department and then the Roads Department has a few. Those six or eight of, that he has, I can program those, but he's waiting on, um, I believe it's Mike Tibbetts out of CDS to come up and do his Kenwoods. So, and I don't know if it's the radio or if it's his if it's road and bridge repeater that he's waiting on getting done. So that's what he's waiting on, and that should finish it up. On uh, on total number of fires, our total number of fires was on a was on a high rate, so we hit about December, and then we kind of just that was about it. We didn't have any runs in December. Um, the number of fires through the year that uh, uh, sure seems suspicious. There wasn't any natural form of ignition that was in place. So I hope that doesn't continue to cut trends. On EMS call numbers, you're going to see that our EMS call numbers have slightly decreased and our collections have went down. Um, Misty can kind of shed some light on this, but um, some of the biggest reasons I, I mean, I personally believe is um, we're uh, transporting a lot of patients that have absolutely no insurance. And uh, when we transport somebody like that, uh, say, to Kansas Heart, their chance of ever being able to afford to pay off a debt like that is almost impossible. Any more light you can shed on that, Missy? And we currently, you know, we're using the Kansas set off uh, to transfer you know, for patients and they aren't paying their bills. But the thing is, it'll sit in Kansas set off until they get a tax return. So if they don't get a tax return back, it'll sit there and it'll sit there and it'll sit there. So that's kind of our problem also. So I thought about um, contacting Michelle at the Great Empire and see if they use a secondary collection agency besides, because I know they use Kansas set off, but I think they have a supplement, a supplement to that also. So let's see if we can't get something figured out on that aspect. But. Still uh, waiting on the hospital to get back with us on maybe possibly taking over at least our collections. We, we launched the bill and everything. Uh, I'm going to look at a couple other places also that, that do that service and, and kind of see what the, do what their uh, their deal with this. I, I think we're just going to have to be uh, tougher notes, which which isn't always small town friendly with our debt collections. Uh, vehicles, Nick, can you shed some light on the new truck? Uh, well, we got the the first five ton from the Forest Service through the Federal Excise Property Program, which that truck is just the same as the deuce and a half that we that we currently have in our in our stock, those will always remain property of the federal government. Uh, if we ever turn it back, then it goes back into the federal government system and then they auction it off. That truck is um, just a little bit of wiring done, or yeah, a little bit of wiring away from being done. Um, the second truck that we just received Friday is through the federal firefighter program. That truck, uh, they say it's kind of hard to tell. It goes by the federal cycle. Um, and after two to three cycles, which they say could be two to three to four years, that truck will become our sole property. Um, both trucks cost the same amount, which was nothing initially. Uh, they just require that within 180 days you get them painted, uh, you get them outfitted, and then you get them uh, in service. And once, when they're, like the FEP trucks, uh, and then until the federal firefighter truck becomes ours, they do put requirements on them, um, thousand gallons or less on on the five tons if it's going to go off road. So uh, we do have a bed and tank and everything ready uh, for the newest truck because that truck uh, will get the bed from what was brush 17 out of Maxville. That was one of the FEP deuce and a half trucks that went back Friday. That's the one that just recently dropped a valve um, at a cylinder number six, so 
it left town Friday after the, the five ton arrived. So those are the two newest trucks. We've got some other trucks that we're going to look at repurposing, try to move some things around to make it a little bit easier. Um, it's always nice to reduce maintenance costs, and I think we can. I think we're going in the right way, especially with the five tons, to reduce the maintenance costs. Um, and I think if we move a few trucks around, kind of give them new new jobs, I think we can even do a better chance of that. We, we had uh, put some new tires on that truck that departed, and uh, we made sure and removed those tires before it left. And yeah. Let it leave with some. Less than good tires. <laughs> so, what about the one you received? It's a pretty good shape, the one. Plus it's you not as good as the first one. The first one we got had a full government rebuild in yeah. like 2010, had like 17 miles on the thing. Uh, this thing has, I think if I remember right, something like 1,800 hours on it. Um, it. It has not received a military rebuild, but for the most part, um, I'd say the tires are 50% on that truck. Um, and then First one we got, it was yeah, it was like new. It was a brand new truck. Tires were new. This truck is a newer new, truck. Even the cab was in better shape. This one's a little the, bit, this one little will bit take, rusty. The paint will fix most of it because a lot of it is just a little bit of dents and dings and some some rust around the corners. But um, it will need a little bit of cab sealant. <laughs> it 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 has some sunshine that comes through in a couple places, but um, the uh, yeah yeah. It's it, it had some abuse. It's better than what left. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's 100% better than what left. <laughs> Tires, uh, we'll get the, the wheels pulled off and get the brakes checked first. That's. I really want to make sure that every vehicle we have has the absolute best brakes that it can have on it. So brakes will be the first thing I look at, and then the tires, just to make sure that we're not going to have any problems. Uh, and the deuce and those we're tires. Really, we're really sketchy on tires. I mean, on brakes. Those things just... It seemed like we could never keep them put the brakes working yeah. correctly and always kind of make you a little nervous when you get maybe a young fire, some younger firefighters driving the things. And yeah, when you have to restrict who drives the truck that way that you know the person driving the truck can operate it well, it really limits you know what trucks can go. So, but. so you've got the one, what do you call it, Bigfoot? Bigfoot. The first Bigfoot's in operation. <laughs> It's it's got some Close. wiring left. Real plug. Some emergency <laughs> wiring and then wiring up the pump. And that's going where? Uh, I don't want to stay here. Here in St. John. The second one is gonna go where? Maxville. In Maxville, uh, some of their uh, firefighters over there that are also city workers are gonna do some of the work on on that. Uh, it's this kind of slow time of the year for them. So they can That truck will be a lot quicker to get ready. Um, the first truck was kind sort of starting from scratch, although we had a lot of the parts from that other truck. Um, this truck will just be a paint job. Uh, we'll put the new bed, not the new bed, the bed that came off the of 17. Uh, that bed is pretty much self-contained as far as plumbing and wiring. All we got to do is hook up some main power to that bed, and that one will be ready. So that this truck will be a lot quicker. To that do some half just goes back to forest mm -hmm. then We don't have to deal with that. We loaded it up on the same trailer that they brought the other one on. Oh, it's gone. Mm -hmm. It's gone. I see. Was that a vehicle owned by the county, or is that a vehicle still owned by the Forestry Service? That all the deuce and a half we currently have, the old 68, and we have 170, um, 6 by those are all through the what they call the FET program, Federal Excise Property. Okay. And those are all forever federal trucks. Okay. But, but this one we will end up owning. This, this truck, they have a new program, and it's called the FFP, um, and it's the Federal Firefighter Program. And that one, after they say after two to three cycles, usually uh, of these federal, whatever the federal cycle is, uh, they will go ahead and send us the title, and we will own that truck outright. But the first one, maybe we can trick them and keep the first one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, switch the That's right. Switch the VIN numbers, right? <laughs> Accepted into the uh, Louisiana uh, Incident Command class. That's in February, and I'll be going to Clearwater with the, uh, a couple of the school groups uh, on the emergency management topics tomorrow morning. I visit with uh, the council and Stafford about pumper response, and they seem to be 
fairly receptive to that. Uh, I'll visit with Max Dalton this evening and then uh, St. John tomorrow evening. And that's uh, to expand their proper response uh, north to south in three corridors. So we could look at um, eliminating our, well, dual thing. Uh, eliminating our need to, to have a pumper responding out of one place, which really doesn't make much sense for the for the sides by the time you got there it'd be mop up there. So we visit with both of them uh, the next two days and then I'll I'll get back to you. Uh, next week I'll let you know how that went. And I think that's that's it. Thank you. I'm not uh, <clears throat> looking to put a very expensive tire on this pickup. Uh, this is a pickup I got in the landfill. Uh, it seems to find quite a few nails. Uh, you know, and when I go to fix a tire, I usually wait for two or three nails on the tire when I fix it. <laughs> but uh, last week I did blow a tire on it, uh, so I'm running on a spare. But uh, they're it's pretty worn down. I haven't ever replaced the tires on this pickup since I acquired the pickup. I never put tires on it. The Paulson uh, tire here is from the very first page. That's a 60,000 mile tire. 132 out of the uh, big idea there. And that's super legal. Is it a thousand or a thousand? Yes. Is it? Yeah, the prices that are quoted are mount balance. Mount balance. Mount balance. What ply are you going to do? Is this tire you want? These are uh, tins. Yeah, I got 
to stay like this, at least it's best if you're satisfied with it. No. Is, is this price with the what deal that Nessar has to you, the, the state net pricing? Um, that I'm not Program. sure. State net. I would text him and he has to text you back. Okay. Because he brought never discounts. Yeah, because Phil brought that to you guys here a while back. I mean, everybody's buying tires. In this. <laughs> well, I mean, you might as well get a group buying deal instead of. Shay's exactly right. We've been trying to emphasize this point for the last two years to use the state pricing policy that we're eligible for. We basically leave it up to you guys to make sure that's happening. We don't have that ability to go out and, you know, and what he's asking is, you know, have you checked? Is, is this, is this are, you, are you receiving that? Well, that I, I doubt. Um, is there certain tire, I mean, certain companies that, that I mean, like I know he gets a lot of the Cooper, or uh, Kansas Lane Tire and Great Bend, you know, they're, they're state discount. Yes. So, yeah. Um, but you just basically have to ask the question, are these tires, are you able to get us these tires from the state? What do you call it? You know, it's the, gov um, just the government discount, is what Phil yeah. calls it. No, but that's not what it's really No, about. I don't know what the official You'd have to ask Phil. I mean, I'm not trying to cut the book on guy out, but I'm yeah. just... No, absolutely not. And, and what you're doing is great. you got several bids and... and and that's fine, but what all we're asking you to do is make sure that these guys, because I think most of them, and we've asked the question several times, most mm -hmm. of these guys can do that okay. through their supplier or whatever. So we're not cutting the little guy out. We just want them to make sure that they're doing their due diligence and their homework and getting them the best price for the game. Yeah. yeah. How about Fisher did? I think we I think decided that all of these guys can do it. I, I mean, I think he, I think he did. I don't know if I would discuss them with the thing. So, I guess what I'm suggesting is that we go ahead and accept this. If their price is based on it. If their price is based on that. But you, we would like for you to ask the question. Sure. The government discount. Yeah. How's, that, how's that sound? Sounds good. Right. But wouldn't you also include Doris's with that too? I mean, if you're going to buy... Well, Doris has got some other research to do. Okay, yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> but I mean, if you're going to buy two sets, I mean, you might get a better deal yet if you're buying eight versus... Well, no, the way that you don't get it. No, just get a discount. Okay. One, one, one price set for the government, that's it. Okay. Not, you know, any more, more sense. That's a uh, one-time dually I have. It, uh, it has gone through a set of tires and come with some 22,000, 24,000 miles on the roof. Yeah, Wait, Phil, he wait to do that. that. He just did the same thing. Yeah, I was wondering about that problem. Like, that's out of the water problem. <laughs> And I think this government discount boils down to excise tax. Oh, okay. It's what it amounts to. It's it's not it's not huge, but in quantity it's significant. Well in theory, you know, the state goes out and makes a deal. Mm -hmm. And you know, you get more quantity you uh, check into that. I do you guys want to approve this now or well, I mean, if, uh, say, like, Boston Motorsports does not, you want me to go with a different, go with one that does? Well, no, course. not necessarily. If, yeah. if, if, if you might check that their prices might be higher than his. Even, you know, I mean, even with that discount, I'm yeah. saying he's not the lowest price. Yeah. Uh, you can check and see what I think. Who's up great band at the go-to you said that? Kansas Land. Kansas, Kansas, Kansas Land. Check with them, see what they want for a set. Yeah. <laughs> and then if that, that price beats that, it's fine for me. But make, but make sure they understand you're a government entity. Sure. And, and that, that you are eligible. And, and check the price out with them, and that is, you know, that's, that's reasonable. I mean, even, even it's reasonable. Not that much, even, but I, I keep it here in town, too, if I can. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, you know, it's, and, you know the reason I, you know, I didn't like to go to Stafford or anything, it's easier for me here in town. Right. You know, or, they pick it up and have to come. Yeah. Or they can come here. Does he have the authority then to go ahead with this in here if he finds out the other is this is 
I'd like to give him that authority. I think so too. Well, I'm going to back up here. Okay. You have a motion for that? No. Just because that's what I said. Consensus is very good. So, mm -hmm. speaking of tires, I've got several I'd like to give you. Mm -hmm. What's that? Yeah, they're free. Why do I want them? What is your policy? Hey, I say that there's been for you. I see there's a recycling place going on Great Bend. You know, the, 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 a great big, yeah, a tar recycling place. And they had Great Bend, uh, they had a big area out there. People could bring their tars in for nothing, you know, get rid of them. Are you got kidding? Them. Oh, go. they got bounds and bounds. Don't you ever read the paper? But anyhow, they have, and it's, uh, and it's just, they've got this big company coming in that's going to recycle tires. So you might be able to. Eventually get rid of them. We can some from here. Right. I mean, they're, 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 <laughs> I'm not sure what's called, but some recycling place going through. Well, now I want money for them. Sure, they have that. <laughs> Is that part I of Sunflower Diversified? They're changing some of their um, recycling. They're, but it's more. They're part moving. of it that I'm aware of is the more consumer. They moved to 10th Street, didn't they? Well, I don't know about Big Tart. But they, but they, they are changing they, they, they drop have yeah, they, yeah, they moved that. They have to yeah, drop them off. I let drop off for nothing. But then I read the paper that had this big company was coming in, was going to set up a, a business there and do tire recycling. Hmm. Might check into it, see if there is. I read the paper anyhow. Anybody else read this? See, I'm wondering if Jake <laughs> yeah, <I'm sorry. laughs> I'd there. like to see the copy of that. <laughs> well, I doubt it's one of them. It's like what to recycle. State <laughs> and the state, because we had one of them. Well, yeah, but this was about six, eight years ago, and I asked them if they were going to have another one in the state. So I doubt Oh, yeah, I think you can call it fine. I call it the uh, uh, city engineer, which is up in Great Bend, because they had they were surprised how many people, how much they had dropped off, everybody they had limited only people living in. In Barton County, you had to have proof of residence, oh. you know, before you could drop them off. There. Oh, oh we can get around that. Can you? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I know people. I know. I know you know. But you might call up and see it. But, but the, if they, if they said they just have something they have to go recycle so they can get rid of the tires. I thought it was a good deal. Proof of residence. Oh, we'll just go through Roger's loophole and get rid of We just got a bunch of barking out of the bag. Surely there's one lying around somewhere. Just throw Roger's digit up there. Oh, jeez. That's on camera, you know. Tired of jumping here, Roger. That's not uncommon. It's not uncommon. I'll cover a lot of places. I'm going to dump trash out of the doors. It'll get cleaned up. <laughs> well, anyhow, do you have certain days that you pick, take tires, or what? Just any time you're open. Yep. And you're open when? Eleven to three thirty. Monday through Friday. They just need to be separate from all the other good. representation from each of the three school districts and um, you know, 
commission districts. It's the same school as the commission district. It's not exactly where, you know, Brian's from from the rating. Well, I, I Sometimes volunteers aren't. But. I, I don't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, our criteria wasn't school districts or commission districts; it was communities, and we felt like every community needed to be represented. So, well, who did you say to go for? Brian Ian Shoots. But so so this keeps um. And, the, the representation that we have now, um, Sarah Hopperman, she's in the northern part of the county, um, sewer area, sewer. Um, Meadow is from Maxville, um, Barb Alpers is from Edison, um, Mary Jo Taylor from Stafford, um, Chad Fisher from St. John. Josh Myers are at large position. Um, I guess that's it in, the, in this, this position. So you got pretty well scattered around then. <laughs> so I don't, my, my purpose here today is to provide you that, that nomination. And it seems like it's increasingly more difficult to get volunteers to serve on, you know, and if you find somebody that's willing to serve on a board, you know, as a volunteer, I, and it does take a lot of time, and I, I would go along with, with the economic board decision to uh, nominate or to encourage uh, Mr. Butler to, to serve on the board. So, in that regards, I would make the motion that we appoint, did you say Jeremy? Jeremy Butler. Jeremy Butler to, the, uh, to fulfill the vacancy for the economic development board. I'll say, we didn't say that we accept Jeremy Butler as an important economic development. I'll say aye. Aye. I'll see. Okay. That's it. That's all. Only official um, thing I have today. Um, we had a, an annual meeting in December because we need to have one each calendar year and the board, I mean, you know, it, it became active in January, so we needed to have one that calendar year. It was kind of an awkward time to have it because we don't, we didn't have year-end financial statements prepared at that time. So from this point going forward, we would like to have We'll adjust it and have our annual meeting probably in February, and um, that will give us a, a chance to fully summarize the year and an annual report. Um, we'll be talking about that in this uh, meeting this week, but we'll likely have something scheduled that all the commissions or you know, members will be uh, uh, invited to. So. That would probably be a better time to, to really summarize kind of an update. So. And then it did in February. Yeah, okay. I mean, I think that's probably where we're heading. We'll discuss it on Wednesday when we have a meeting and we'll have some input on that. But we have a, we have a newly appointed, or a new slate of officers. We did that in December. But, um, 
probably be 14 months instead of just 12 months to put us on a cycle that, that makes more sense with our You know, I think we could probably get at least five, six, seven hundred dollars for our current plotter instead of a hundred dollars on a trade-in. That's why a trade-in is not included on that. It says the discount and trade-in. Mm -hmm. That's different than discount, you said. Yeah. yeah. I think we get an extra discount actually because through OPI because of what we purchased from them. But they're only getting a hundred dollars for a trading. That's typically what it would be yeah. verbally be. Yeah. Uh, a couple years ago, we uh, sold the one for uh, at Ellsworth, the same one, and and that was the trade between two hundred dollars. And so I did the same thing there. Because we kept it, and then we trade. We sold it actually to a, a school system, and they still use it today. What one do they use it for? Uh, banners. Because these plotters can make not only maps, but they can make uh, banners. They can make 
a lot of times when you go to uh, and see the, the athlete, the seniors, those are made with plotters. Or if our school doesn't already have one, though. And they might. And, and if, I'll just keep calling the different schools. I'll call the different school yeah. system. And, and, and we're finding a school that, that wants it. The cities typically don't need it because they don't do that big of plotting. You're doing them a favor, too, because then they don't sure. have $4,000 to buy. That's right. And, and, and it'll still last them, too. And I think we've, we've maintained it very well. And <coughs> we can keep the paper we have because it'll be on the same side of the kind of road and so forth. So what we purchased there is we'll, we'll keep that for this product. So, yeah. The seat center has one of these. Do they really? Yeah. They print ma mainly on vinyl. And it's quite the toy. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it'll just, it'll, it'll do... The plotter we have, you know, has, has done very well with the photography, but this in here is more crystal clear. So, I mean, it's ten years ago. Yep, here we go. You need one here. I just go that. No, that's true. We, uh, we plot for, and you know, we would use this here. We're we'll use this. Uh, try the the next project would be the uh, city of Stafford's going through, you know, their zoning still. And, uh, and we're going to make their maps for them. So, so we make it for the others. We try to make all the maps for the city. Yeah, a little chuckle out of that one. Yeah. And then there's like this 11 ounces of ink is $158. It's just ink it's like a lot. It, it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the, to give you an example, the cartridge that we get right now for the, the plotter we have is 65 Per cartridge. For each color. Mm -hmm. And there's four of those. This one here has one more. You say less but like I said, it it they they last for a long time. They don't dry out and they will last for an extremely long time. So I guess I ask if you have any questions there. You say you're going to try your, your approach your skills to see if they're interested. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. We're eventually finding somebody to, to sell it to. You know, like if, if the school system here has it and the Stafford has one, you know, maybe they needed one over there in that, uh, that program they have going on over there at Stafford. I don't know what you call it. For the kids? The seed center. Oh, that's what you're in. Oh, yeah. That might require two. So you think around $4,000, mm -hmm. Carl? Yeah. And we have 13800 in, in the reserve. Okay, I'll make a motion. We allow Carl to approve this purchase of this water. My second. It's been moved and seconded. Well, I'll go ahead and purchase the plotter and keep the old one in. Tedlin off. off. That's good. All right. Well, we haven't voted yet. Well, <laughs> everybody in the you're pretty confident of the results, are you? <laughs> everybody in favor say aye. 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 <coughs> you're, you're correct. Sir. Okay. And just to kind of fill you in, we're still shooting, you know, that we're, yeah, we're on the calendar year, you know, where we've not evaluation doses, uh, they have to be out by March 1st, and as of right now, we're on, on track to get those out without an extension. Uh, haven't, have, have not received the ad use values yet. Uh, if you guys remember last year, they did go up for evaluation, um, and by verbal, from the, the, the state, they will go up again this year. Now, just kind of remember, though, that doesn't have anything to do with what they're selling for. Uh, one thing on this here is uh, the reason, even though the costs are still there and, 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 and so forth, but the uh, they're messing with the cap rate, and that's the last phase to get to valuation. And we'll go over that. And, but 
the cap the rates are changing. Yeah, right? yeah, so yeah, the yeah, use value. Are going to go up? Looks like it, yeah. Last year we went up about 6% and, and it's kind of looking about the same thing again. So, but in the past, last year was the first year that the ag bags have went up like in eight years. So, so we're still... And that's due primarily to the price of commodities. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one thing that's holding the irrigation down, the irrigation didn't take the increase like the dry crop or the pasture is because the, the expense to get the water out of the ground, the expenses is, is overshadowed some of that. They do figure expenses. Yeah. yeah. And one thing that they did probably six years ago, which made a big difference, is they used to figure on planted acres, and now they figure on harvested acres in our in our district. It makes a big difference if you have something flooded out and so forth. Mm -hmm. It makes a big difference what what's compared to what's planted compared to what's harvested. Mm -hmm. And that is what what. Flood? The ag use values. You said That's flood. on everything. You said flood? Or, <laughs> yeah. Or <drought. laughs> Where could be drought? Yeah, yeah. A lot of it here is blowouts. Yeah. Just saying blowouts. So, so it's better that we report that we didn't harvest our acres? How do they even know that? Well, and, and a lot of people don't like who, who does the the Ag Statistics Group out of, out of K State is who does that when they mail out your letters, and, and they, they actually do the research on the crop the, the cropping districts, and then from that they give that to the state of Kansas Crop Evaluation Department, and then they figure do their part, and then they put in the cap rate to get the value. K State doesn't do that, and then in turn, then the state gives each county the valuations for all that by soil. The USDA survey didn't have anything to do with that? We actually converted, uh, when they converted to their four digit soil numbers, we converted to that also. So we have, in con we, we have the same soil types now. Um, and then they are working actually between counties, they even have the same soil types now. In the past, in the old soil types, what a NA soil type was here didn't really mean that in Pratt County or vice versa. And there was a problem there. But when they went to that same numeric, numeric system, they're supposedly linked in the counties side by side. For those property owners that don't land in the adjoining counties also. So. That USDA survey, I just farmers just got in the mail. I mean, they're down to, the, they want to know exactly what you harvested, I noticed, you know, compared to what you planted. I wondered if they got information from USDA, too. Um, I, I don't know. I would, I I mean, would it's think. really uh, precise this year. Yeah. But they asked the difference, didn't they? Okay. And it's better, it better come out exactly right. I mean, what is important? Yeah. So, mm. Anything else? What's that? Why is it important? That's the U.S. Why is that? No, what I was saying about it important is if it showed the difference between the harvested and the planted. It's important for your tax purposes. It, it can make a difference in the valuation for the whole district. Yeah. yeah. Because if you, um, what you harvested compared to what you planted would show a difference in your yield. confused on where they're getting their statistics that, that, that arbitrary survey that they send out well that and then they they have some other resources too then they case crop state insurance or ASCS information or anything sure. that might be sure. valid whatever case state does in their study okay. so I can get you a thing on who all is involved in <laughs> Good I thought you did. Not really that uh, I thought you did. Well, <coughs> no, that's actually not on that. Yeah. Yeah. No, that wouldn't be on there. So, that's all I have. Do you guys have anything for me? Say the tires. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
Did you guys do the bank designations and everything? Next week. Next week, okay. And the, the papers next week. Next week. That's all I was hanging around. How'd you get through, how'd you get along with your end of the year? It's not done. We're not done yet. We're You're still not waiting. Done yet. Huh? You're not done yet. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Forward, forward. Um, got a support call in right now that I've been waiting for two days on. So, mm -hmm. as soon as they get that done, then maybe we can. Oh, what's this one? Yeah. I need 15 minutes for the one Please. <coughs> Sorry. This is fine. Hold your locks. Get her done. So, you need 15 minutes for an executive session yep. for non elected personnel? Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion we go into executive session for 15 minutes for non elected personnel. I'm sorry, I'm going to move and second that we go into executive session. 15 minutes for non elected personnel. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, yeah. Look at that. Uh, 845. So if you want the press here, your parents, whoever. Shane's already got that lined up. Same. <laughs> so anyway. I'm seeing the desk off and get ready to go. I can tell. I'll get there and say, oh, grab a red volume bolt. Don't you have a new one of these? Yeah, I just haven't put them in here yet. Did a bunch of slobbering all over them. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm ready to go. <laughs> you got anybody else out there? No, no. Yeah. You just need to stamp vouchers, but you can do that afterwards. Yeah. Uh, well, we can, we can wait a while. No, you're fine. You Let's recess anyhow. Oh, can we go back here? I'm working All right. Yeah, we're going to recess. Or is there... Well, we're going to recess. Yeah, 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 we're like you're thinking about this. Why don't we just, why don't we recess and do this and, okay. and then adjourn? Okay, let's recess. <laughs> Pick all the cashews out. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go back here. Oh, I have to still go to my funeral. Anything else, yeah. gentlemen? Let's adjourn. Did you put us adjourn. Back?